Hello everyone, I'm Santanaka. Thank you for your time. Today's video is about reverse proxies. By learning this, you can enjoy several benefits such as operating multiple sites on the same server and enhancing security. Previously, we focused on writing syntax, but this time I would like to introduce a browser-based tool that even beginners can easily configure. I will explain using diagrams for clarity. Let's get started. As illustrated in the diagram, when using a reverse proxy, the servers behind it do not need to be directly exposed to the Internet. A private IP address is sufficient. One might imagine a conversation like this. It's great that the servers behind are not exposed externally. However, wouldn't that be problematic for remote work? There are measures to address this issue, such as using Bastion hosts or VPN connections. These are particularly effective in scenarios where global IP addresses are limited or when there is a need to reduce costs. Additionally, a reverse proxy can manage multiple servers behind it and distribute traffic based on domain names. For example, it is possible to host multiple WordPress instances on a single server and use a reverse proxy to route traffic to each instance according to its domain name. We are about to start the practical part, and I will explain the important points as we go along. First, we'll set up a reverse proxy using Docker. We will proceed with the guidance provided on this page. But as previously mentioned, the configuration can be done through a GUI, making it recommended for beginners. We will install the Nginx Proxy Manager. In the VIA, we configure it through a cloud service, but it can also be done locally. Upon hearing this, some might think, This is Linux, right? I only have Windows at home, though. No worries. There are ways to try out a Linux environment on Windows. For example, you can use a virtual machine or the Windows subsystem for Linux, which allows running Linux directly on Windows. Additionally, to avoid extending the video length, we will proceed, assuming that the necessary ports have been opened or the firewall has been disabled. To make it easier to understand, we will create a directory and place a configuration file there. On the GitHub page for Nginx Proxy Manager, you can find a YML file for Docker Compose. Upon hearing this, someone might think, Is Docker Desktop on Windows also OK? Yes, Docker Desktop on Windows can be used just like Docker on Linux. Most features are common, but there may be some differences in behavior between Windows and Linux in certain specific scenarios. If you install Docker on WSL, you can create an environment almost identical to Docker running on Linux within Windows. Next, I will show you what's to write in the YML file, but some might think it sounds complicated when they hear this. Wait, I'm looking at it, but it makes no sense to me at all. Don't worry. We are just copying and pasting the content from the page, so please be patient until we get to the browser Base operations. We will start a container based on this file. As it works just by copying and pasting, it's beginner friendly. With that, the preparations are complete. However, before accessing through the browser, let us double check the container status. Oh, and before that, we need to link the IP address with the domain. We decided to do this because the Nginx Proxy Manager allows for easy SSL configuration via the browser. Once everything is ready, we will access it through the browser. Oops, seems I was a bit too quick for the changes to take effect. Now that enough time has passed, let's try accessing it through the browser again. It displays correctly now. I log in using the default email address and password. On your first login, you'll see a screen like the one shown in the video. So make sure to change your email address and default password here. 
From next time, you will log in with this user information. Now we get to the main topic. We will configure the reverse proxy server so that it can route to the specified server when accessed. I will illustrate the actual scenario we will perform with the diagram. Besides routing, there are several other benefits which I will also explain. I think one of the conveniences of using a reverse proxy is being able to efficiently distribute traffic to different backend services or applications while using the same port number. Some might respond to this by saying, No way, why not just have users access via specific port numbers? However, that approach would require users to remember the port numbers, making URLs harder to remember. Many companies and organizations restrict access to specific ports from the outside, which can sometimes hinder user access. The service behind this setdom will run WordPress and belong to the same network segment. We will now quickly set up this WordPress environment. While it is possible to install on different network segments, for better performance and easier management, we have decided to place both the reverse proxy and WordPress on the same network segment. What is its segment? I hear it sometimes, and I thought this would be a good time to learn. Yes, I understand. You know, I'll show you what a segment is with the following diagram. I want to go into much detail, but it tends a basic concept that I recommend you learn about. Does the next diagram resemble the setup you might have at home? In personal usage environments, routers manage network segments and coordinate communication between devices. Typically, a router acts as the gateway for the home network, distributing internet connectivity, and providing internal network security. Generally, in personal network environments, all devices are placed within the same segment. It is in such environments that reverse proxies and WordPress can also be installed. In the video, the backend server is WordPress. But I believe it would also work with image generation applications like Stable Diffusion. Now, let us set up the Nginx Proxy Manager's browser interface to route to WordPress. Oops, but before that, we need to check the private IP address of the server where WordPress is installed. Now that we have the IP address, let's proceed with setting up the proxy. In the domain name field, enter the domain name you want to use to access through the proxy and also input the IP address of the WordPress server. Essentially, we are creating a rule that will route any access made to the entered domain name to the specified backend server. Now that the setup is complete, let's actually check it. Indeed, being able to achieve this so simply is quite convenient. Yes, it's user friendly because it uses a web-based interface, allowing you to manage and configure the reverse proxy without directly editing complex configuration files. Since we have this opportunity, let's make the page SSL compatible. Obtaining and renewing SSL certificates automatically is extremely convenient. By centrally managing SSL certificates on the reverse proxy server, we can prevent direct exposure of backend servers. I usually do this via command line, but it seems equivalent processes are happening behind the scenes. Now that everything is set up, let's check it out. This is great. It's so easy. I've learned a lot. Especially utilizing free SSL certificate services, like Let's Encrypt, allows for automated acquisition 
and renewal of certificates, simplifying SSO certificate management. With Nginx Proxy Manager, you can intuitively manage these settings through a GUI, and regular certificate updates are automated, making it easier to maintain continuous security. Why not learn to build a safe and reliable web environment? Yes, I would love to learn more about it. I'm especially interested in how to automatically manage SSL certificates. I look forward to seeing you again. Goodbye.